It's Thursday, April the 6th. Mugabe calls government gay. What gave him that idea? <laughs> Hospitals are filthy. Just the way I like them. <laughs> Jet set couple guilty. He entered her cockpit. Please welcome the ultimate fly guy, Mr. Ian Lee. Hello and welcome aboard the 11 o'clock show. Tonight we'll be cruising around business class looking for cheap birds to pick up. Because jet sex couple Mandy Holt and David Matchin have been fined for making a mess of the black box. Apparently, <laughs> uh, apparently the pilot's the only one allowed to adjust the flaps. <laughs> they get worse. On the plus side, thanks to the publicity, they've been offered free tickets by Aer Lingus. <laughs> But let's face it, air travel has always been a powerful aphrodisiac. Even the Pope can never resist slipping the tarmac a little bit of tongue now and then. Uh, <laughs> you cheeky Pope, come on. And many's the time I've dreamt of a stewardess holding my salty nuts and helping me empty the contents of my miniature. <laughs> but one word of warning, if you are going to play hide the sausage at 20,000 feet, please, please, please don't go outside for a post-coital cigarette. You will get sucked off, but only into the upper atmosphere. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the first class girl for whom the sky's the limit, Miss Daisy Donovan. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, some new research claims that the best place for boys to learn about sex is a chat with their mum. I suppose that explains Prince Edward's problems. But who are they kidding? Boys can learn everything they need to know about sex by watching Madame Bovary or Hollyoaks. Or, for the more advanced, Lesbo Nuns Go Anal. Right. I can't really say anal on television, but thanks for clearing that up. Now, what's Before coming up... Before you ask, here's what's coming up on tonight's show. Coming up, Ricky Gervais brings us more of his amazing internet facts. Soccer lady Helen Chamberlain puts football into focus with all the Premier League gossip. And as for Ian... I'll be finding out if honesty's the best policy. Vanessa, you're still fat. <laughs> but now it's time for the headlines. <sighs> Tonight's top stories. Following the death of Charlie Cray yesterday, it's been announced that he's to have a traditional gangland funeral. He'll be buried in a support pillar on the M62. <laughs> Following his demise, producers of a forthcoming biopic are becoming desperate in their search for someone to play his villainous twin brothers. Lib Dem leader Charles Kennedy was spotted auditioning for both parts. <laughs> Pop star JK has designed a convertible car based on his fiancée Denise Van Outen. You can now comfortably get four men inside and the top comes off really easily. <laughs> A woman gardener has admitted to killing over 90,000 slugs in five years. The local police are charging her with assault. <laughs> there were ugly scenes in London this morning as Carolina Hearn's neighbours regretted inviting her to their garden party. <laughs> After the tragic death of Eurotrash star Lolo Ferrari last month, her breast implants were given new life today as they were released into the wild. <laughs> City News and the Bank of England today launched a new coin aimed at preventing beggars hassling people for small change. <laughs> <laughs> there was shock last night at the stage premiere of The Graduate in which Kathleen Turner appeared completely naked. Theatre-goers were seen to recoil in horror as the curtains went back. <laughs> and those are tonight's headlines. <laughs> Weekend sees the Grand National, the annual event that brings the glamour and excitement of putting a pound in the office sweepstake to pick out a horse that breaks all its legs at the first fence. <laughs> but it's not all laughs. Here's Danny Boy with his report. This Saturday is Grand National Day, which makes this Sunday National Glue Factory Day. A bunch of old nags competing for the top spot. No, it's not the Spice Girls going solo. This is the centrepiece of the racing season. With taller shrubs and deeper ditches, this year's course is more hazardous than ever. But as always, a team of highly skilled vets will be on hand to offer expert medical attention. <laughs> as the old saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. But get a pumped up midget to whip its arse with one of these, and it will run like buggery. 
But every jockey knows a happy horse is a winning horse, which is why we've compiled this simple guide to grooming a Grand National winner. First, go out and find yourself a nice horse. Hi. I, uh, <laughs> but notice you play in the 3.30 at Newmarket. <laughs> Sugar cube? Don't forget to pay your horse regular compliments. Just remember, he's someone special too. Oh, you, you make me feel five feet tall. And you're hung like a horse. And finally, from time to time, indulge your horse in a little fantasy role play. If there was ever a case of horses for courses, this is it. For the winner, it's a place in racing history among all the top breeds. For the loser, it's a place on the specials board of a top Parisian bistro. This is Danny Boy for the 11 o'clock show, Aintree. Mm, nice tasting horse, didn't it? Did you like it? Yeah, nice bit of horse. With dot-com company shares dropping faster than Martha Lane Fox's grin, public confidence in the internet is looking decidedly shaky. Here to guide us through the technical jungle is unlikely boffin Ricky Dean Gervais. Nice to have you in the studio again. Yeah. Hey. What have you got for us this evening? Well, since we uh, launched our, our website and... Um, Two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, it's going very well. And um, I, I remember talking about the uh, internet facts. Yeah. But it's caught on because people are sending me some facts now that they found on the, the website. Oh, I'd like really to share it. some with you. Please um, do. Um, Genuine facts. Apparently, uh, if you feed a seagull Alka-Seltzer, it explodes. <laughs> <laughs> Who found that out? Some research scientists like, oh, I've run out, oh, I've given a Feminax to an owl. <laughs> Vic Sai next to a penguin, fuck all. <laughs> mm, I'll try that. <laughs> Excellent. ICI. Um, this is a true one. Starfish have no brains. Really? I uh, well, apparently, I don't know if that's meant to be taken literally, like these little echinoderms have no central nervous system, or it's like a bit of graffiti on a rock, like someone left it in charge and it fucked up and now they're, <laughs> they're really dissing it, right? like, you know, a shrimp's a mean or um, jellyfish are a bag of nerves. So, uh, starfish there. Clinging onto rocks, covered in sort of salty uh, foam and uh, totally brainless, no offence. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm joking. OK, you like this one. This is fantastic. The so. daddy long legs contains the most powerful poison known to man. That's true. It contains the most toxic. However, it cannot administer the venom as it has no teeth. <laughs> what is the point of that? Do you know what I mean? So God, there, he'd made all the fish, made all the, the birds and the mammals, had a bit of stringy thing left over. There you go. Daddy long legs. <laughs> you know I mean? You're a daddy long legs. Right, OK. Not the most attractive of creatures, am I? <laughs> no, but you can fly. Well, not really. I sort of bump into things and I skip along. It takes me about half hour to find a window. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> also, won't kids just pull these off? <laughs> no. Because you've got the most powerful venom known to man. Have ah. I? Yeah. Use it wisely. They kind of go, oh, wow, don't know. Oh, they're dead. Actually, I'm taking the teeth back. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> How am I going to eat? Well, you don't need to eat because you only live a day. I don't, it takes me I'm gonna get out of the fucking room. <laughs> Even if I actually fell on a slug, that they might be able to start over. They can, they just have to duck it. <laughs> Poor little thing. A useless, lanky thing that sucks. No offence. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> a cheeky slug. What? Daisy, I've got to ask, do you always tell the truth? No, I always lie. I'm lying now. Right, if you're lying when you say you're lying, then when you... Oh, my head! Christ, I can't work it out! But is everyone as duplicitous as me? Ian went to find out. Or am I lying when I say that, Ian? <laughs> the last millennium saw liars such as Geoffrey Archer and gentlemen thieves like Raffles prospering. But are we a more honest society in the 21st century? I've come here to Cardiff, home of the truth, to find out. Are you an honest person? Yes. How big's your cock? Huge. <laughs> that's a lie, isn't it? No, that's true. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. 
who do you think is to blame for all this dishonesty at the moment? Is it politicians, the police, or that band that sang, Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies, tell me lies, no, you tell me lies. I don't think it was widespread dishonesty. Mm. Oh, okay. Supposing your, your fat, ugly wife asked you how she was looking, would you, is it acceptable to be, be dishonest then and say, Yeah, you're looking fine, my love? Yes, maybe. Do you do that often? Uh, well, I'd rather not answer that. Okay, so that's, yeah. Can you tell if someone is dishonest just by looking at them, do you think? No. Definitely not. Really, because there's a report out, you probably may have seen it at the weekend, there's a report out saying that all short men wearing black jackets, carrying books and leaflets, with uh, not much hair and thick glasses and look a little bit pervy, are all dishonest. <laughs> have you noticed that to be true in your life? No. <laughs> not in this life? <laughs> Would you ever pretend to be a heterosexual to get away from a man kept queering you up? We have, I have done it, yes, I have. Actually, pretend to be heterosexual. Yeah, like, only, only for a bit of fun, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Supposing the Queen had to suck you off as a matter of national security, would it be okay to be dishonest about that? You can't say that about the Queen. But supposing it, for a matter of national security? Yeah, yeah it would be alright. Yeah. Yeah. As a gentleman thief yourself, what makes a good thief? What makes a good thief? Mm. Not getting caught, for mm. one. How have you evaded detection for so long, Raffles? <laughs> I've never actually thieved anything. What makes a good thief? I don't know. I'm not a thief. No, I, I know you're saying that because you're scared you'll get caught. But listen, <laughs> when we put, before we put this on telly, we'll cover your face. We'll look, make it all look like a computer thing so they won't know it's you, OK? So don't, they won't know it's you. What makes a good thief? Someone who's been doing it for years. Like yourself? Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been doing it for? 18 years. And what's the biggest thing you've stolen? Um, a car. So there we have it. It appears that honesty is the best policy. And to be honest about it, I've got a massive cock. This is the elite 11 o'clock show, Cardi. Now, at the moment, the unemployed will only get out of bed for two reasons. Either wipeout has just started or a wipe-up is needed. <laughs> That's all about to change. A report out today reveals that the DSS are planning to catch dolies out by ringing them at home. But don't worry, as long as you say what they want to hear, there's no need to change your lifestyle. Just stick to our do's and don'ts of doll dodging. The phone rings. Question one. When was the last time you worked? Do say... A month ago when I voluntarily drove a sunshine bus to the beach. Don't say... Thank you for calling Tarmac you like. Luke, put some pants on for mummy! <laughs> Question two. We rang you yesterday. Where were you? Do say... I must have been cold calling for work. I find it helps to meet people face to face. Don't say... Would you answer the phone if you're up to your nuts and your brother's wife? <laughs> Question three. We have a vacancy in the butchers with an immediate start. Do say... Great. What are the career prospects? Don't say... Brilliant. I've been cutting up rabbits all morning. Can I bring the knives home? <laughs> Question four. Are you available for an interview this afternoon? Do say... Yes, of course. You say where and I'll be there. And early. Don't say... I've got nothing to wear. I only own one pair of pants. I've just spilled a pot noodle on them. <laughs> Question five. Is there any disability that prevents you from working? Do say... Nope. I'm in perfect health and available for any job. Don't say... I'm sorry. I'm deaf and blind. Then drop the phone and pretend to walk into the wall. <laughs> And finally, question six. You've turned down three jobs in the last week. Do you want to work? Do say... I'm clinging on to the hope of that perfect job. Don't say... I'm clinging on to my cock right now. Can I phone you back later? <laughs> and that was our do's and don'ts for dodging the social. <laughs> That's it for part one. Still to come in part two, special guest Helen Chamberlain brings us the latest on football's prima donnas. And straight after the break, we've got classic clips of grown men wailing at steamy passages. You'd be mad to miss it. Gail is lover and the Bible. Oh, and the joy of sex. That book put my back out for weeks. <laughs> Christ, books are a sudden danger. Fans, that all happened 11 years ago today, and this is the 11 o'clock show on Thursday the 6th of April. Coming up, Paul Garner tackles burglars. But first, here's another look at today's headline news. Wills and Harry knee-deep in snow. Tara says, don't worry, I'll snort them out. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio interviews Clinton. Bill says, you sure got a pretty mouth. <laughs> JK designs new mini. He says he's tired of riding an old bike. <laughs> 
With the rights to football matches being sold off this week, it's going to be on the telly more than ever. To help ease us through the transition, please welcome our football pundit, Soccer AM presenter, Helen Chamberlain. Now, according to a survey out in today's papers, West Ham fans are the most stylish supporters. Do you agree? I thought it would have been Chelsea, just because of the position that Chelsea is in the posh bit in London. <laughs> but apparently, the reason why they didn't come top is because 22% of Chelsea fans thought that um, signet rings, gold signet rings, were stylish. Classy. Very classy. Yes. Oh. They, the sovereign signet rings, they thought they were 22% um, of them, so maybe that's, uh, maybe that's why. OK. Now, you support Torquay. Where so, yeah. do you think they came in the stylish league? All right, out of, out of how many? If it's 92 English league clubs, um, plus maybe the 10 Scottish Premier League, 102, a hundredth then, just above the knuckle dragon inbreds of Exeter City and Plymouth Argyle. <laughs> I have to yeah. say, Helen, they actually came 87. Results! Oh, yeah. Not so bad! Not so bad. 87. That's made your night, isn't it? <laughs> Very sad. No, because I know what they all look like, so... Yeah. Now, Prince William is Aston Villa's most famous fan. I met Why him. Why has he chosen... You, what? I met him. I went to the Villa Bolton FA Cup semi-final at Wembley on Sunday, mm. and I met him. Why has he chosen Villa, though? Is it just to get uh, on his dad's tits or something? I, <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, think, I, think, I think maybe Villa was chosen for him. I just imagine that kind of thing. He says, I like football, and the whole royal family go, bugger, football. <laughs> That's not rugby, is it? Or polo. Um, bugger. Right, well, uh, who's he going to support then? Can't really have a London team. Too London-ish. Um, Manchester United, no, everybody will hate his guts. Mm. Let's pick someone in the Midlands uh, as Premiership. Aston Villa. Now, yeah. stand on the man Colin Moore broke a bone on Saturday. It was actually Dead. one of his own and not his girlfriend. <laughs> um, OK. How do, you think, <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you think the injury will affect him? Well, there's only uh, seven games, I think, left till the end of the season now. And it's not, it's not like a clean break, tib and fib. It's a bone in his ankle. So I think that by the start of the next season, he'll be fine. He'll be OK. Still be able to pick up a fire extinguisher. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> David Seymour was in a horror car crash this week. Beckham pranged his new car. Yeah. Are they just... Are the footballers crap at driving? What, what is going on? I think they are. Georgie Kinkladze, he smashed his Ferrari up in sort of a 110-mile-an-hour race. I think probably some other footballer in his Ferrari as well. Yeah, they're just crap drivers. Big, powerful cars. Put foot down, off we go, crash into hedges. <laughs> or other people, or... or Sounds or like just, a great yeah. night out, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Now, Helen, obviously you can't guess, you can't see into the future, but can you yeah. shed any light on the following rumours? Is Rude Hullet going to Fulham? I hope not. Right? Is it true that Arsene Wenger has signed... <laughs> this is a great thing. Is it true that Arsene Wenger has signed a juggler he saw on the beach? Not a ball juggler. What, a cock juggler? No. What was he doing? <laughs> Not a, a ball-in-hand juggler. He saw a guy juggling, you know, keepy-uppies on his feet, doing oh. lots of different... How many did yeah. he do? Well, I don't... I, um, He's only do four. Don't. Can you? <laughs> yeah. I thought right. so. All right, yeah. Is it true that Ryan Giggs is obsessed by fish? His house is full of fish. His Ryan Giggs' house is made of fish. He's banister. <laughs> is this true? Hold on there. He's banister. He's got fish in his banisters. We've been told that he sleeps in a bed, and the surround of his bed is is made Tuna. of see-through glass <laughs> with fish. We've been told he's got a fish coffee table and a fish cistern on the back of his bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ellen Chamberlain. <laughs> a time when people could leave their front doors open, their kids played in the road, and everyone in the street was like a member of the family. Those days still exist, but only for Cornish divvies. The rest of us spend our lives trembling in fear behind locked doors. For more on this disturbing trend, here's Paul Garner with a special report. Who are you? How'd you get into my house? I'm a burglar, and I got in because of your inadequate security measures. <laughs> now stop humping the skirt, and give us all your cash. <laughs> they say an Englishman's home is his castle, but without proper security, you may as well have lowered the drawbridge and drained the moat, leaving your property an easy target for the home intruder. 
Dogs like Sherlock here can make great loving pets, but ask any police officer and he'll tell you they're also the best deterrent against burglars, even more so than an expensive alarm. If you can't afford a dog, or like me, you're banned from keeping one because of past convictions for cruelty, here's a few ideas that could cheaply and effectively make your home more secure. Buy yourself a deterrent sound alarm. Some people have those which play a recording of a dog barking if an intruder tries to enter the property. But with burglars now familiar with the dog recordings, we recommend using one of the other settings. You're going to get your fucking education! You're going to get your fucking education! Fit steel trip wires in your home. An intruder who trips is likely to be scared off by the experience. A note of caution. Always remember to disconnect the wires apart from when you are asleep. Whoops! Or better still, discard your own sexual preferences and shack up with a copper. If you do get broken into, he'll know exactly how to deal with an intruder. Right, you're nicked. You can, of course, spend a fortune on expensive security devices. But at the end of the day, simple common sense is by far the most effective way of keeping your home's intruder free. Secure your windows, double lock your doors, and don't go on holiday when the fair's in town. This is Paul Garner, The 11 O'Clock Show, in Essex. Good things come in small packages, but try telling that to the man who's just been sent his wife's ear through the post. Time now to find out who's been held to ransom and who's had their demands met in this week's Good News, Bad News. Good news. Patsy Palmer is starring a new show about Batsy Dog's home. Bad news. She's worried she's being typecast. <laughs> Good news. A mother has had her 21st baby. Bad news. Her husband now has to be lowered in on a winch. <laughs> Bad news. Underarm deodorant can give you cancer. Good news. For the French. <laughs> Good news. Prince William raised the roof by singing YMCA at a school karaoke. Bad news. Harry then ruined the mood with his version of Candle in the Wind. <laughs> Good news. Scientists have discovered that people with the same surname share a genetic makeup. Bad news. For anyone called Gaffney. <laughs> Good news. Prince Philip gave a public display of affection when he kissed the Queen at the airport. Bad news. He then tried to fist her in front of eight stewards. <laughs> Bad news. Wendy Richards was mounted by a dog at the Golden Bonio Awards. Good news. It's the first action she's had since Arthur died. <laughs> Bad news. Police say the man who killed Jill Dando was an amateur. Good news. He's now semi-pro. <laughs> and that was this week's Good News, Bad News. That's nearly all from tonight's show. Before we go, as horse enthusiasts await this weekend's Grand National, suspicions are growing that the event may have been nobbled by a Middle Eastern betting ring. <gasps> <laughs> and finally, we leave you with Ricky Gervais questioning the very morals in which the foundations of modern society are built. Good night. Good night. Do you think it's acceptable to show um, hardcore pornography um, early evening on television? No. Um, what if it's in a wildlife programme? Um, I don't know how it can be, necessarily, if it's hardcore porno. Well, if it's, if it's two chimps having unprotected intercourse? Um, I've never seen it, so, you know, maybe. It's possible, I guess. Um, where do you draw the line, though? What, what if the chimp pulls out and then says, mm, in the mouth? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't believe it would happen. Right, I do need this back, but take a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I directed that. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> it's called Gorillas in the Minge. Okay. That's it. Right. Okay, I think I might not take it, so thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much. All right.